really like using beaded closures on my bead woven jewelry and a peyote tube toggle is the thing that I go to most when I'm looking for a simple closure. One of the reasons I like it is because you can use the same beads that you've used in the rest of your project and so it gives it a very seamless look. It's also a really good beginner thing to learn how to do because peyote is a very basic stitch. It tends to be the most common stitch and the one that people report liking the most. Uh, ironically, when I first learned it, how, how to do bead weaving, I failed at learning peyote. But that was me, not you. So let's take a look at what we're doing. You're going to want to use a stopper bead to uh, keep your beads from falling off the end when you start out. Stopper bead is simply an extra bead. I like to use something that is not part of my project so that I don't accidentally get it woven in. And I bring that stopper bead down to where I have maybe two to four inches of thread below it. And then I pass my needle and thread back from the bottom up through the top. This is going to leave a loop of thread on the outside of the bead. And that's okay, that's what we want because this is just a temporary bead and we're going to just pull it off later. Then you'll pick up the number of beads that your project calls for for the toggle closure. In this case, I generally make my toggles 10 beads wide. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And I'll bring those down to my stopper bead there. I like to work towards the stopper bead here. So what I'm going to do is pick up the next, the first bead of my next row. And I'm going to skip the bead closest to me because I want this new bead to sit next to it. So I'm skipping the first bead closest to me and I'm passing through the next bead. When you pull it, it's going to create this little T-shaped intersection. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. You'll pick up the next bead. You're skipping a bead for it to sit next to. Let's bring those guys down. Skipping a bead for it to sit next to, and you're passing through the next bead. And you can see that you're kind of getting a little bit of this snaggle, what I call snaggle tooth action. You're getting sticky outy beads and then recessed beads. You'll keep doing this all the way to the end of your beads. So you pick up a bead, skip one for it to sit next to, and then pass through the next bead. And then, got two more to add on this row. Pick up a bead, skip one for it to sit next to, pass through the next one. And then last bead. Well, they just wanna run away from me today. Pick up a bead, skip one, pass through the last bead. So what you've got then here kind of looks almost like a zipper. When you get ready to add, do your next row, you're just going to flip it over. Again, I always like to work in the same direction and that's why I flip it over. If it's more comfortable for you to work from the top down, and it is for some people, that's fine. That's not a problem. But now we've got little indentations, these spaces between the sticky outy beads, and those are gonna be the spaces where our new beads are gonna sit. So once you've got that first row established, peyote is super easy, and that's why people love it. I'm picking up a bead, I'm just passing through the next sticky uppy. Pick up a bead, pass through the next one sticking out there. And yes, sticky outy is a highly technical term but everybody knows what I'm talking about. You want to watch to make sure that your thread doesn't catch on the rest of the beads, like mine just did there, because then you will have an extra loop of thread showing on the outside of your beads. And you just keep adding beads all the way along. If you find yourself with a spot where there's no sticky uppy bead on the next one over, that means you probably did something wrong on the previous row. You may have skipped a bead accidentally. Now that I'm at the end of that row, I'm going to flip it and I'm ready to continue up the row for the next row. Now here's the thing, when you pick up the beads for your first row here, when we picked up 10 beads, we're actually picking up the beads for the first two rows because once we added row three, those beads, those first 10 beads offset, five of them 
are sticking out and five of them are indented. So knowing how many rows you have in peyote is a little bit of a trick. Let me show you how you can count rows. Here I have a piece where I have made 10 rows and there's several different ways to count rows in peyote. One is you can count the beads on a diagonal. I find that really hard to do because I get lost in here. And so my better way of counting them is I will count the beads in the outside two rows on one end. It doesn't matter whether it's this end or this end. So here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this piece is 10 beads wide by 10 rows. And that's exactly where we need to be because in the next segment, we're going to show you how to zip this up and turn it into a tube and what to do with these threads at the end. Once you have your flat piece of peyote created, uh, then we're gonna turn it into a little, a little tube and it's a really fun thing to work with. Let's take a look at the beads here. I like to tell people you're gonna take that flat piece of peyote and you're gonna fold it like a taco. We want those long edges to come together. And what you're gonna notice as you fold the long edges together is that we've got the sticky outy beads go back, zigzag back and forth here. And so what we're gonna do with your thread is we're just going to pass through these beads, zigzagging all the way up to the end, and that's what's gonna create our tube. So. We're going to just pass this needle through the first sticky outy. The next one is going to be on the opposite side. You want to make sure you don't loop your thread while you're doing this. Because I'm using some nice big beads for demo purposes, I can angle my needle and get through two beads at a time here on the diagonal. Sometimes you can do that with smaller beads too. That's if you've get lived a good and pure life, which obviously I have. Okay, so then back and forth through the sticky outies all the way up. You're gonna start feeling this kind of getting a little more solid. As you tighten your thread, you can almost feel that bead click into place as it pulls over. And then our last two sticky outie beads here. Voila. And now we have a rounded tube and it's hollow down the center. But now you've got these threads going on here and, and we need to end the threads off. When you zipped up your tube, there's one little space and it's right here where your two threads are coming out. There's one space between these two beads here that has no thread connecting those two beads. And so they kind of, you can see where they kind of V apart a little bit. So when we go to end off this thread, what we wanna do is correct that little problem. Since I'm working, my working thread is coming out right here, I'm gonna pass through the bead right next to it that has the no connection there. And I'm gonna angle my needle and I'm gonna pass through three beads on the diagonal. And then as I pull that down and tighten that, now you can see where there is a join of thread between those two beads and it, and it keeps everything together. When, anytime that I'm ending off thread, I want to be changing directions several times and that's what's going to keep everything together. So I'm just came down on the diagonal. I'm going to come to the very next set of beads on the diagonal and go up. Want to make sure that that thread is sitting along that intersection there and that it doesn't hook on any other beads. So when I tightened it, you notice that the thread just sucked right down into the beads and you can't even see it anymore and then I tend to go through the next three beads over. So now I've switched directions three times with this, and at this point I'm ready to just cut that thread off. I like to hold a little tension on my thread as I do that, and just snip it as close to the beads as possible. I will do the same thing with my tail thread. Now I would just uh, put a needle on this and same thing that I did before, I would just go down, up and down, weave back and forth to end off this thread. And then this is now a toggle bar ready for a loop for, to use as a clasp. I'm also eventually going to show you some ways that you can use this little peyote toggle bar to make jewelry itself.